Hi, this is Keith with another tutorial on the Behringer X32 digital console. And today we're going to cover changing the bus sound from pre to post fader. Um, in any situation where you, you, know, you have a gig coming up, you want to basically start out by configuring the console accordingly, um, deciding on what monitors you want, uh, subgroups, um, effects, sends, that, that type of thing. Um, the console, the, the actually the X32 console, uh, has this nifty, if I can use the word nifty, nifty little way of, of configuring the console quick and dirty here. And how you facilitate that is by hitting setup um, and then scrolling over here to config. If you notice on the right hand side, there's five uh, pre config options to select from. You can see there's eight, zero, and eight, ten, zero, six. 844, 664, and 484. Um, and you would select them by scrolling here and then click. Um, but first, let me explain to you what these numbers mean. The numbers on the left are your pre fader, uh, usually wedge monitors and things like that. The number in the center uh, are your subgroups, and the numbers on your right would be your post fader sent to effects or um, video feed. Uh, side fills that uh, say for instance a DJ once as he's fading out the house the side fills to, to fade but, you know at the same time so you don't hear this this thump coming from stage after he's fade the house out but anyhow so say for instance you decide I think we set this up already for uh, I think it's eight four and four and then click um, say yes this yes and there we go now the console is set up in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pre-fader, say for monitor wedges. Lower down the next four, one, two, three, four, or subgroups. And the last four, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, by default, uh, feed the input side of the onboard effects. So you have four monitors, four subgroups, or excuse me, eight monitors, four subgroups, and four effects under this pre-configure. Now in the event that you decide uh, you want to change one of these uh, from pre to post, uh, this, is, well, this is how you do it. You would go over to bus sends and click view. And as you do that, obviously the screen will change. Now if you notice here, you selected the microphone channel, bang. You would bring in I mean, several ways with doing it from this screen that you would turn this knob and it actually brings the volume up of that microphone in uh, bus one monitor one monitor one <laughs> so check check one two check all right um and you would scroll up the screen scroll down actually <laughs> it's because either one way or the other and as you can see as per pre-configure it says post EQ but basically um, that's prefig pre-configure excuse me pre-fader oh, Jesus pre-fader like that even if it says post EQ or pre-EQ it's still all three of these are pre-fader ones before the EQ the ones after the EQ and this is your basic pre-fader so let's set up a pre-fader post EQ so we have eight monitors set up a pre-fader, as you can see, four uh, subgroups, and then the last four are your post-fader feeding the effects. Um, um, how to change these, of course, you have to understand that this jump rotor right here will move the, as you can see, the uh, in increments of four channels are highlighted by the yellow, and by spinning this, it will move over to other uh, bus sense that you can work on. Whatever's highlighted is going to be the active um, send that we are working on. As you can see, the numbers here will change. Bang. As I'm spinning this, the numbers will reflect that. Um, you probably also notice that it's going in increments of two. So the first, um, as we're spinning these here, <laughs> Um, you'll be able to work on just increments of two at a time. So as I'm changing um, this 
pre-fader to a post-fader, it's going to be changing channel 1 and 2 at the same time. And how we facilitate that is by turning this knob. As you can see, as I spin this, it reflects the changes here. Spin it again, now we're on post-fader. Okay, so as you can see, channel 1 and 2 are no longer pre-fader, they're post-fader. And then the next 6 are pre-fader, and then the subgroups and the post-fader for the effects. Um, but it doesn't stop there. <laughs> so it gets a little tricky here. You notice, so we check channel 1. Uh, it's now post, post fader. Channels 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 are pre fader. But as we select the, the next channel, boom, it's back to pre fader. When you change um, from pre to post this way, you're only changing the channel that's being selected. So, in order, if you wanted to change all of uh, sends, bus sends one and two to post fader, you'd have to virtually do this with every channel. Select it, change it here, and then move on to the next channel and so on. Um, so in essence, <laughs> uh, this basically just changes if you had one channel specifically that you wanted to be, you, you had regular monitors all over the place in pre fader, but you had one that you wanted to go up and down uh, for some reason coincide with the DJ or something like that. You want to just change that one channel. That's how you would do it. Uh, so I basically take in a uh, not so complicated situation and really made it confusing. <laughs> so, and uh, that's that's I think I've done my damage for the day. And that's it. Good night.